whatever you want from me, whatever this big new job is, I'm out, okay? I'm done. What's up everyone, it's Maverick. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. As you guys know, the Diamond Casino Heist DLC was released on December 12th, 2019. So just over a week ago. You get a text from Lester asking you to meet him at the park. A short cutscene unfolds explaining the background. And bingo, we've got the new Diamond Casino Heist DLC. But not so fast. First, you've got to get yourself an arcade business. So I'm going to show you all the arcade locations and how much they cost. By the way, if you're new around here, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you'll always get my new videos. And a quick shout out to my subscribers. You guys make these videos possible. Now let's go ahead and check out those arcade locations. If you head over to the Mace Bank foreclosure site, you're going to find that there are six retro arcade locations to choose from. There are four locations in the southern part of the map or the Los Santos area. And there are two locations up north by Mount Chiliad. We're going to start off on the south with the Davis location. This location will cost you $2,135,000. It's actually one of the more expensive locations. I'm going to quickly go ahead and show you guys this location on the map so that you have an idea of where to find it. And here you have the Davis Arcade. So essentially what Rockstar has been doing is scouting out locations on the map, changing the facade, and making it look like whatever they want for the DLC. In fact, I like what they did with all of these arcade properties. They look pretty good. You guys will see what I'm talking about later in the video. But I particularly like the way they designed this one because it's very colorful. It's got a lot of vibrant colors. It's very reminiscent of an old arcade in the city. And I like that they captured that look and feel. There's even some writing from the old businesses that were there. Let's go ahead and pan around this area. Many of you might recognize it. Do you know where this is? Let's see who gets this in the comment section. Alright, for those of you who haven't hit up story mode in a while, this is where Franklin has his garage. It's actually right around the corner, to the left of the arcade. Alright, let's move on to the next location. This next one's called Video Get In. It's located in La Mesa and it'll cost you 1,875,000. So let's go ahead and look at the map real quick so that you guys will have an idea of where it is. Alright, so here we are at the Video Get An Arcade location, guys. As you can see, it's different than the happy to be colorful location in Davis. Here we just have a dark gray building with a Video Get In logo. And even though it's not colorful like the location in Davis, I really am digging this aesthetic. It's a very simple concept and that's what I like about it. That dark gray color is actually making the Video Get In sign stand out. And if we pan around, you could actually see the whole area where this is located. In fact, if we go to the right here, just beyond the bridge, we're going to find Lester's textile business. So we're two for two with the story mode references here. And by the way, that flaming skull looks really cool. Like I said, it's simple, but that sign pops. Alright, let's go ahead and move on to the next location. So this is the third location and it's located in Rockford Hills. It's called Insert Coin. And this one will cost you a whopping 2,345,000. Once again, let's take a look at the map so you guys can check out the location. So across the street there is the Insert Coin Retro Arcade. And it stands out from those other storefronts with that black facade. The sign is not as prevalent as a Video Get In sign. And the fact that it's kind of dark kind of makes it blend into the rest of the store. I do like the graphics on the storefront. And I also like that entrance on the corner. 
and for sure I really like those Space Invader-like characters on the side. That's a nice touch. And if we come out to the sidewalk and pan around, you can see that we're just down the street from the Lum Bank and the Mace Bank West CEO offices. And down the street on the left, we can see the Richards Majestic and Weasel Plaza buildings. All right, let's move on to the fourth location. And this is the 8-bit retro arcade, and it's located in Vinewood. And the price for this one is 2,530,000. And FYI, this is the most expensive one out of all six. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the map so you guys can get an idea of where this one is. And across the street behind that tree, we've got the 8-bit Retro Arcade. And just like the last three, it's got a dark facade. Except that the 8-bit sign actually stands out a bit more than the last one. And you've got another business sign here on the side. It's kind of tucked in a corner, very unassuming. And even though this one doesn't really have graphics on the facade, I still like the simplicity of it. This is actually my favorite for a very self-serving reason. And that is that it's next to my apartment at the Eclipse Towers. In fact, this is the street where that purple modded Sentinel XS spawns. You can sell that car for 17 grand at LS Customs. I'll link to that video below so you guys can check it out. There was one other thing I wanted to show you guys about this location. I don't remember seeing this in the other locations, but it's here. First, let me show you guys a quick shot of the Eclipse Towers so you see how close this location is. Can't get any better than that if you have that apartment with this business location. And this here is what I wanted to show you guys. It's that Kaihatsu logo, which is actually a play on the NES logo. That's some nostalgia right there. Kudos to Rockstar for throwing that in. Alright, let's move on to the fifth location. This is the Wonderama Retro Arcade, and it's located in Grapeseed. And you can buy this one for 1,565,000. And of course, being so far away from the city makes it one of the cheapest. So let's go ahead and do our zoom in of the location so you guys can see where this place is at. And this here is the Wonderama Arcade. What I like about this location is that it has just the right amount of color. And by that I mean that it has a playfully colorful sign with a nice blue facade. It's not over the top like the Davis Arcade, which is nice in its own right. But this is a very inviting looking place. And come on, if that rocket doesn't say fun, what does? I also like that it's a standalone building with nothing attached. And there are plenty of spots to park vehicles. Yeah, it's in the middle of nowhere. But I like that. It's quiet out here. Away from all the drama in the lobby. I wish Rockstar would give us a nice property around here. Maybe down by the Alamo Sea. I would buy it. I think more people would come out to this area if Rockstar would put some more things out here. In my opinion, this area is not used as much as it could be. But enough about that, let's go on to the last location. This is the arcade property that Rockstar advertised before the DLC came out. It's called Pixel Pete's and it's located in Palito Bay. And it also happens to be the least expensive property at 1,235,000. So let's zoom into the location on the map so you guys can see exactly where it's at. So this location is not that easy to find right off the bat. The first thing you'll see is a sign that says Pixel Pete's. But you might be a bit confused at first because there's a gas station behind it. 
In fact, it's not even a working gas station. It looks more like an abandoned property. And if you're not too familiar with the area, you might look around and just miss the property altogether. So let's check out the surroundings first so you guys can get more familiar with the area. There's actually not too much out here that I can tie this place to. The only thing I can think of is that this is the area where Franklin, Michael, and Trevor robbed that community bank. In fact, you might remember that they used juggernaut suits. So that might help. And if you walk past the abandoned gas station toward the unassuming building behind it, you'll see that there's a sign on top of it that says Pixel Pete's. And if you get closer, you'll see the arcade art on the windows. There's not much to see in terms of the building. I mean, it's a red brick building. And again, the front is just an abandoned gas station. But that artwork is pretty cool. In fact, this is the only location that has character art. And although there's not much else happening with this property, that right there is what makes this location unique in my opinion. In fact, there's even some artwork on the side of the building. If we go around the corner on the left here, we can see some of the characters that we saw on the front. In fact, when I first came out here, I thought this was the actual front of the place. And who can blame me, I mean, this side looks livelier than the actual front of the place. I mean, they have the characters here too, so, you know, I figured this was the front. And they've also got a Pixel Pete sign here, which to me looks a lot livelier than the other sign. Although, I did find it odd that they would put the entrance to this arcade in the alley. So I went around the whole building, and I found the abandoned front area where the abandoned gas station is. But when I turned the corner on the right, that's when I found the real entrance, the one I showed you guys. So I stumbled for a bit before I found the main entrance, and that's why I wanted to show you guys exactly where everything was. So now you've seen all six locations. Thanks for checking out the video guys, I hope you guys found it informative. Again, if you're new around here, subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so that I can bring you more content. And please hit that like button as it helps this video get out to more people. Quick shout out again to all my subscribers who make this channel possible. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.